It looks like we have uh, 14 people. In the yeah, yeah. People, uh, when people just start join one by one after they work because in during working from home, uh, the task is so many. There's so many tasks. <laughs> That's why not from the usual uh, working from office because everybody can can start the meeting anytime anywhere that's why um handy do you know how many people are we expecting approximately approximately uh the participant will join around 50 50 50, 50. Okay. 50. That, that is a, 50 is a pretty big number yeah, yeah. Uh, usually we have, yeah, our, our, our GVM is up, usually attended by around 15 to uh, 100. Okay. Yeah, usually. Because this is, yeah, COVID, and then during working from home, there's so many tasks there outside. Yeah, the that's COVID, true. So they, can, they cannot do it, that's why. Okay. Um. Yeah, so I'm okay to, to start uh, or I'm okay to wait. You you let me know um, yes, what sure, we sure. should do okay. here. Okay. So is there any welcoming from Microsoft team, uh, Alex? Yeah, uh, I think from before we start, uh, based on the our schedule, we, it's, uh, will be from GVM group first, right? And then you will offer to me. And then after that, uh, Sen and Xiaolu Dai will uh, 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 Run all of the yeah, yeah. conduct yeah. all of okay. the session, and then we will uh, giving back to me and yeah, offer to you to closing. Okay. 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 Then. Okay. Let's start. So oh, yeah, let's start. Let's start, everyone. So let me share my screen. Wait. Where's my oh here. Oh, I need permission. Sorry for for what? Sorry for do you to, really share screen? To share to share screen. I need permission to share screen. Okay, wait a second. I think I will ask the Microsoft event. Wait a second. Maybe I just uh, try to share mine with a second. Just want to. Yeah, you, you can see my screen now. No. Uh, still blank. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ready? OK, uh, then you should uh, could, uh, share also. Uh, how about if you? Let me try. Yeah. Oh, I with cannot. The, with the arrow icon, you know, share content, it should, it should be possible. Oh, I'm not using a PowerPoint. I'm using a keynote, so I cannot, yeah. But actually, you can share the screen, actually. Is it, possible? Is it in there? Share the screen. The screen yeah. one. There's no option to share a skin like usual on my company. Okay. Because, uh, but, but, but wait. Or do you want to uh, type it? There's the no. Chat? Wait, wait. Because mine. Okay, yeah. So yeah. yeah. Wait. Oh, uh, I still I still have no permission to share my screen. Okay, wait a second. So the other thing you can do is uh, send the deck to either Alex or me, yeah. or and we can share it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you can share also to me. Wait. Is it allowed to share? The, uh, if you share the keynote or you have to PowerPoint first. If, if uh, it's, it's also possible to share the keynote, keynote. actually. 
Yeah. Right. Ooh. Speak. Okay, okay, wait. Have to confirm first. Blah, 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 blah. Right. So I will send a PDF. Lah. While waiting the per, the other participant, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. Mm, uh, GVM. It's desktop. So, 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 uh, I will share it to you, Alex, uh, via uh, WhatsApp. Yeah, I cannot okay, upload sure. here. Sure, know. sure. Uh, set. No worries, mess. Where, where, where? Desktop. Well. Hey, do you guys usually do this in English or uh, Bahasa? No, Bahasa, because most of the speakers are local from Indonesia. I That's see. Why. Yeah. Okay. Because during COVID, so every uh, the other speaker from not lo inter local international, so can join. So we do on um, English. <laughs> so I've sent it to you, uh, my, my Alex. Yeah, sure, so sure. I just uh, uh, present this, right? Okay. Okay. Wait a second. Minute. Okay, this PDF, yeah. Okay, I will share first. Okay. Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to GVM Meetup uh, 30, uh, 38. We're gonna discuss about uh, Azure Spring Cloud Workshop on this, on tonight. We have two, uh, two speakers from Microsoft. Uh, the first one is Sean Lee, Senior Program Manager from Microsoft. And then the second one is Xiao Lo Dai, a Support Engineer from Microsoft. So before we do that, uh, before we do the, on the session, I will introduce myself, myself like as usual. So, yeah. Okay, uh, this is introduction, like usual, on the GPM meetup, because maybe some of you have, have known me yet. So, my name is Handy Sandika. Everyone call me Kang Handy. So, Kang means big bro on uh, Sundanese in Indonesia, on Bandung. So, please call me Kang Handy aja, yeah. Just call me Kang Hendy. Okay, I am a CEO. CEO means another one. This is ship everything officer, yeah. <laughs> ship event organization organizer because I uh, manage everything. I am GVM, uh, Kotlin, and then DevOps. Actually, I manage many Telegram group in Indonesia, but I more um, focus on the, those three groups: GVM. JVM, uh, Kotlin ID, Kotlin Indonesia, and then DevOps Indonesia. Uh, next. Okay. So here's the history. So JVM user group, uh, from the beginning we have, uh, like I told you before, we have a Java user group in Indonesia, but best, but that's based on Yahoo Mails. Yahoo Mails, yeah. So, and then Facebook rock the world. And then we change it from uh, Yahoo Mails, Yahoo Groups into Facebook Group. I created on 2010. And then it's called, previously it's called a Forum Java Indonesia. So now it consists more than 65K members. We have uh, fanfest on Facebook fanfest. We have Telegram and then Twitter. 
and Java user group. I created from Facebook. Now we have platform on Telegram group uh, founded on me on 2016. And now we have more than 7.3K members. So currently we have uh, uh, one 7.3K me Telegram member on Telegram. Next. So we have daily, not daily, lah, monthly event. It's called JVM, JVM Meetup. So like I told you before, previously we have like uh, Jamu, Java Meetup. Yeah, all of the, in, uh, all of worldwide is called Jamu. And then that's why the group is Java user group and then Java uh, Meetup. So I changed it. <laughs> We uh, we have the founding father on Java in Indonesia. We discuss how we if we change the name, not Java User Group. On uh, now we change it into JVM Java Virtual Machine. Why? Because JVM not run only Java, right? So we, uh, we in, on JVM run Kotlin, it's the latest JTON, uh, JRuby, and then Clojure and many things. Yeah, Scala and many more lah. So uh, how about we change it and then we change it into JVM and then the meetup will, it's called JVM meetup. So we have uh, event like this, um, monthly, usually we do an offline, in the offline, yeah, we, uh, we share our knowledge and then we try to gather more, more speaker, more participant because most of the JVM uh, member are uh, very very yeah, senior previously because Java itself is very it's been 25 years long right uh, so it's, it's been 25 years old the JVM itself that's why uh, almost of the JVM developer most of senior in our in our telegram group that's why okay next that's if you want to be speaker, everyone, like I told you uh, on uh, during the JVM meetup, please call me and then uh, we can uh, discuss what's topic and then uh, which sponsor. Okay, next. Yeah, if you, if your uh, office want to be a house, yeah, like previously I told, yeah, please call me and then uh, provide uh, this kind of thing. Okay, next. It's the event, we have many workshops, something kind of like this, workshop, JVM workshop, next. Uh, we have workshop also about this, okay, next. We have a uh, social media account here, so we you can connect uh, to us via the Telegram, JVM user group, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and uh, not, at least at JVM Indonesia channel on YouTube. So most of the our JVM meetup is now, it's been a JVM meetup 38. So most of the JVM video are, are already published on YouTube channel, which is JVM Indonesia. Okay. Okay, next. So if you haven't, uh, see, if you want to see, uh, you want, if you want to know, uh the event in indonesia and in jvm you can follow this link jvm indonesia dot eventbrite.com and then just click follow then you will get notified when jvm meetup is up so you there's a uh jvm from the fast event on jvm event you can see what's the topic what's the speaker if you want to see uh, the speaker please uh, use that link to your reference. This is already discussed, has been discussed, or it's not. Yeah, that's why you have to be uh, follow this link first. And then if you have, or if you find, yeah, we, I have this topic, how about this kind? And then we discuss and then I will uh, publish it. Okay, next. So actually before, uh, COVID-19 attack before the Fire Nation attack and then it ruin everything. So uh, usually I have a roadmap one year from January till the end of the year in December, from January till December. 
So I already set up all the January host the speaker, host the sponsor until December. So since COVID-19, uh, Fire Nation attack, and then my schedule, and I, I, I think not only my schedule, the other schedule also got <laughs> messed up. That's why from the, uh, since March, I think since April, we changed the format from the offline, from the offline into online. That's why uh, we changed it. And then uh, I, I shuffle again, the sponsor as speaker, and then something like that. Okay, uh, next. Okay, here's the link. I have uh, created some links uh, about tele Indonesian Telegram group, its.id slash groups. So you can, if you click that link, you will see list of the programming Telegram group in Indonesia. Most uh, of the IT, most of the programming. Okay, and then uh, I have volunteer to cover. Yeah, I have many volunteer uh, to run this JVM meetup. And then like uh, many, many volunteer. If you want to be uh, to join our, our JVM Indonesia as volunteer, please let me know. I think uh, it, I will appreciate, very appreciate, highly appreciate for if, if you join to uh, one of the volunteer in JVM. Okay, thank you. This is my introduction. Thank you, and I will give it back to Alex. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Alex. Yes, thank you. I will share my screen. Wait a second. Is everybody can see my screen now? Yes, good. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, first of all, uh, thank you so much for Kang Hendy, uh, who already inviting Microsoft to join the meetup station in the GVM Indonesia. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex. I am integrated marketing specialist for Azure and um, not just uh, in Azure, but I also uh, helping the developer communities in Indonesia for, you know, arranging the activities. If you want to have some uh, activities or sponsorship also, you can come to me as well. And really uh, uh, nice to meet you all. And yeah, let's go to the next slide. So yeah, I will start with our mission, basically Microsoft mission. It's to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So we are uh, uh, with by doing this, we also uh, really uh, sorry for the quite leggy uh, uh, doing the tech intensity for the uh, every uh, professional, every developer uh, throughout uh, all of the country and also in Indonesia. So we create the inclusive technology. If you are see right now, the live captioning that happened in the presentation is part of the accessibility. And we also become the trusted platform with our uh, uh, very st uh, strict compliance and also responsible AI that being practiced uh, all over the world. And also we really practice the fundamental rights and ensure we are the uh, using the sustainable uh, technology to support our cloud system as well. Yes, let me start with the uh, some of the program from the Microsoft uh, team. So we have the Microsoft Learn, first of all. This is free and you can uh, build your skill uh, fast with uh, free interactive tutorial with the Microsoft Learn and you can uh, uh, have a look, take a look in the short link in here and all or the take the barcode in here. So yeah, it's a uh, very uh, useful and very uh, recommended tool as well. And uh, Microsoft Learn also provide you to, if you want to become uh, the, like example, AI manager or IT manager, uh, they also provide you some of the capabilities, some of the knowledge uh, uh, and give recommendation in the Microsoft Learn. So you are not, uh, you are, will have get the recommendation and you can follow that recommendation to to fulfill your knowledge. The next is the Azure free account. So in Azure free account, we will have the uh, if you uh, type in the short uh, shortened link, you will go into the uh, Azure free account. 
It's a Spilnitz uh, uh, credit card with the 12 months popular free service and always free for 25 service. So yeah, this is uh, for um, you can uh, you can leverage this as well for the uh, Azure credit. And the other one is uh, Microsoft Learn for Student. Yeah, maybe some of you, if you have the kids or you have the, uh, um, you know, uh, somehow is a nephew, ponakan, gitu ya, yang ingin uh, belajar tentang teknologi, uh, want to learn about technology, you can also register, uh, you can also uh, uh, encourage them to learn in uh, uh, Microsoft Learn for Student. So it's very a unique, very interesting experience to learn in here. The last one is, uh, sorry, the, the other one is the Azure for Student. Azure for Student basically uh, is same with before. Uh, when you create account in Microsoft, you will get the credit, but this is for student for $100 and you will uh, no need a credit card in here. So yeah, you will uh, you will uh, no need the credit card and really for the student, which is very uh, good tools for the student to to start their uh, uh, early uh, uh, to to cloud uh, computing. Yeah, just to inform, uh, I will do a little uh, mix in Indonesia and Bahasa in this part. Uh, so we will have the Azure fundamental training usually every month is twice. And if you join the webinar and you will get the free $100 exam voucher and you, uh, to take Azure fundamental exam. So this is the shortened link and with the barcode as well. I will uh, uh, type into the chat box uh, while the uh, Sin and uh, Sin and uh, Xiaolu uh, presented their uh, presentation. I will. Uh, chat giving the chat uh, into the all of the shorted link uh, shown in here. So yeah, ini uh, basically ini uh, kalau Bapak-bapak Ibu-ibu join the webinarnya, itu akan mendapatkan serat, uh, serat sekitar 100 dolar free exam voucher uh, untuk ambil uh, fundamental exam gitu. Jadi kalau fundamental exam ini kalau di luar uh, harganya sekitar 100 dolar. Jadi uh, lumayan banget uh, di leverage aja opportunity ini karena uh, sifatnya uh, siapa cepat dia dapat gitu jadi kayak uh, emang emang uh, uh, penuh juga kuotanya jadi uh, lang langsung aja daftar untuk yang Azure fundamental untuk Oktober sampai Desember ini oke okay, ini last part is um, bapak ibu ibu bisa subscribe uh, Microsoft Source Newsletter uh, untuk uh, uh, mendapatkan info-info uh, terbaru mengenai uh, developer community saat ini seperti apa jadi if you want to have more information, you can uh, uh, going into uh, uh, this shortened link as well. Yeah, basically that's all for me. And I think I will uh, let's going into the our first speaker uh, and very excited to uh, uh, have our uh, first speaker in here, uh, which is uh, Sen and uh, Xiaolu. OK, Sen and Xiaolu. Uh, Place and times is uh, yours. All right. Thank you, Alex and uh, Kao Handy. Um, so by way of introduction, my name is uh, Sean Lee. I am a product manager based in the Shanghai office at Microsoft. Uh, and uh, let me start by introducing my team. So the team that I work at is, is the Spring on Azure team. Uh, there are two uh, areas of investments that we focus on at the Spring on Azure. Uh, there is the Azure Spring Cloud, which is the full and managed pass offering we have for Spring. And then there is uh, Spring Integration, uh, which is um, something we will lead off of this. Uh, and here with me, I have uh, Xiaolu. Xiaolu, do you want to jump in and do an introduction of yourself? Oh. Hello, guys. Um, I'm Xiaolu Dai. My name is Xiaolu Dai, and I'm, I also work on the Spring on Azure team. And myself is a is a software engineer and we develop uh, we develop uh, spring starters like uh, spring starter for keyword uh, which is a azure service uh, to to help uh, to help uh, the spring community um, better use the azure services yeah okay all right so with that uh, let's delve into today's presentation 
Uh, can you all see my uh, deck in full screen? Yes, yes. Good. Okay, cool. I think I was, I'm supposed to turn on the uh, subtitles. Here we go. Testing subtitles are appearing now. Okay, all right. So today's agenda, we're going to uh, look at the Spring integration first. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what uh, Azure Spring starters are, uh, what benefits does it provide, and then um, we will actually do a live demo today. Um, um, I will do most of the talking uh, for both of the sessions, and Xiaolu is going to do all the coding. So I, I get the easy part. Um, now, uh, before I talk about this slide, the, the Spring ecosystem, I'd like to get a raise your of hand, but how many of you in the audience have are familiar with Spring and have used Spring Boot? If you can raise your hand in the uh, Teams window. Hey, mana, 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 mana. Where's this Spring Team, Spring Team? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, I've gone full six, screen. Seven people. Seven? Seven out of uh, 20 something? Is that right? Okay, all right. So I guess not that many people have, uh, have used Spring Boot. So in that case, let me uh, spend a few minutes on this slide, right? Then talk about Spring. So there are uh, largely three uh, projects within the Spring ecosystem. There's Spring Boot, Spring Cloud, and Spring uh, Cloud Dataflow. Uh, we'll start with the Spring Boot, which is the, the most popular uh, framework. Uh, it is uh, the VMware's uh, opinion native view of how uh, you as a developer should build modern applications in Java. Uh, the idea is to get you started as fast as possible. Uh, some of the key values offered from the Spring Boot is uh, it, uh, it eliminates boilerplate code. Uh, it, it offers a framework for dependency injection, uh, auto configuration, ex externalize your configuration outside of your code, uh, as well as you know, production uh, ready metrics. The second project here is uh, the Spring Cloud project. Uh, and what that does is it, it provides uh, a set of uh, well-defined patterns and tools uh, for uh, microservices to work together, communicate with each other in, um, in, in the cloud. Right? Some of the well-recognized patterns and implementations under the Spring Cloud projects are, uh, you have the Spring Config for externalize your configuration. Uh, you have the uh, Netflix Eureka for service discovery, uh, Zipkin for distributor tracing, uh, again, uh, Netflix um, Hysterix or Resilience for J for Circuit Breaker. Those are some of the well-known ones. And lastly, uh, we have Spring Cloud Dataflow. And what that does, it's, it's a set of tools to address uh, stream or ETL-based data processing patterns. I think some of the uh, concepts here that if you have used Spring Dataflow, uh, then you might have heard of uh, Spring Stream, Spring Tasks, or Spring Batch. So for today's presentation, we're going to focus on Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. Uh, but if Spring Cloud Dataflow is an area uh, that interests you, or if you have a use case that you would like to see uh, more support from Microsoft, uh, do speak to me in the Q&A session, and I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, Spring Cloud Dataflow as well. Okay. So next up. So why do we? Why does Microsoft care about Spring? Um, as you can see in this chart, uh, there's an overwhelming amount of uh, usage of, of Spring developer in the world. Right? Over 61 percent uh, of Java developers are done using Spring, and this is from the latest uh, JetBrains report uh, or 20, uh, JetBrains 2020 report. Um, and in terms of the number of downloads, uh, you know, you see you know, roughly about two, uh, half a million downloads per month in November uh, 2018, and that number almost doubled uh, in, uh, in November 2019. It's a tremendous amount of growth. All right, so here we are uh, talking about the um, spring integrations. And what we really would mean by that is it's a, 
it's it's a set of Azure starters that makes it easy for you as a Spring developer to connect and consume Azure services under the Spring framework. So as the chart such, you can adopt the Spring idiomatic way to take advantage of managed services on Azure with only a few line of configuration changes. In other words, if there is a Spring way to do things, there is a Spring way to do things on Azure. Right? That's our goal. And, then, and this set of libraries uh, that you see in the open is really the culmination of years of collaboration between Microsoft, the open source community, and VMware uh, engineers. So let's talk specifics, right? Uh, in this table, we are breaking or categorizing our investments into um, uh, six different buckets. Under the Spring Cloud, we have a starter for app configuration, service bus, uh, storage, Redis, function. Under the R2DBC library, we have support for MySQL, SQL DB, Postgres uh, database. For Spring Data, you know, we have you know, uh, Cosmos DB, MariaDB, MySQL. Spring Security is a very popular one. Right? Uh, Azure Active Directory, Key Vault, um, Spring Messaging, uh, service bus, Micrometer. Right, we have log analytics under uh, monitoring. Um, so next up, we're going to take a look at the um, you know, the value of of Spring um, uh, Spring Boot uh, versus um, you know consuming the Azure uh, SDK. So what we what I'm going to show here first is uh, where uh, I realized the lights here just got switched off. Uh, so you probably can't see me anymore. Uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'm back up. All right, sorry about that. Um, where was I? Yeah. So let's let's first look at you know if we were to use the uh, Cosmos SDK to connect to a database, you know, here's what you would, would do. Right, you use this code client dot create database if not exist to create the database, create a container. A container is uh, is the equivalent of a table in a traditional uh, R RDMS language, and then once you've do done that, uh, you can uh, add a new um, record into the Cosmos DB by using uh, the the next line here: create a container item. Right. So, which is pretty straightforward, right? It's not that hard. But then, um, if you take a look at this, this is all you have to do in the Spring. Uh, in the spring world, yeah, just two lines of code, right? Uh, ignoring the well, the, on, on, on the on, on the very top, you have to create a, an entity. But after that, it's you know you're you're defining a, a container uh, again. Container that maps to the table, right? You give it a name. You tell the container how much R um, RU, which stands for uh, resource unit. That's how you're getting building Cosmos DB, right? So you tell Cosmos DB, those two parameters, and then you would uh, extend the uh, the repository. The, in this case, where I'm extending the reactive Cosmos DB uh, repository. Uh, and, and lastly, this is this is you know it's just this one line of code to to, to save this record on Cosmos DB. So this is a, a much simpler or uh, leaner code block comparing to the um, uh, to the uh, Cosmos DB Azure SDK. Now, uh, how? So that's all great. How would you actually go ahead and use our Azure Spring starters? Primarily, there are three steps. The first step is to bootstrap your project using the Spring initializer. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm hearing like there's a song apologize. In the background. Oh wait, wait a second. Yeah. So here is uh, our good old Spring initializer. Uh, if you're a Spring developer, this uh, should be intimately familiar to you. Right? So you would go here, uh, add the Azure support dependency. So that's step one. Uh, and then for the Cosmos DB example, uh, we're going to add the, the additional dependency called Azure uh, Spring Data Cosmos. So that's something you would have to add in your Palm uh, file. And then after that, uh, step two is where you would configure how your Spring app would talk to your Cosmos DB application. Right? So in this case, we need to tell your app the URI of your Cosmos DB. We would need to tell the uh, the access key that you would use. 
And lastly, the name of the database. Uh, you probably don't like the fact that you have to code the actual Cosmos DB key inside of your application property files, which is perfectly fine. You know, we'll you know um, stick around. We'll show you how you can get rid of that. And in the last step, this is you know, this is your um, you know, how you would normally use uh, Spring to, uh, to to talk to other Azure services, right? And so this this is the native Spring abstraction. Uh, we're, uh, so again, we're extending the uh, reactive Cosmos DB repository, uh, and then we're we're going to auto wire that with, uh, or we're going to auto auto wire our code with the uh, the repository which is defined. And after that, you can just use the uh, the mono and flux syntax to query data off of Cosmos DB, and that's it. That's really it. They're just those three steps, right? Um, and then today, I'd like to take this opportunity to announce that the um, uh, the GA of the new uh, Spring Data Asmo, Azure Cosmos DB V3 connector, uh, which is now uh, generally available. So with this new connector, uh, we are putting in um, a, a large list of performance enhancements as well as feature uh, enhancements, right? So first of all, Right off the bat, by consuming the new uh, Cosmos DB V3 Spring Data Connector, you get about 20% performance improvements. Um, you know, just by doing nothing, but like, just, just by consuming this this new um, connector, which is kind of mind blowing. Uh, and second, we added the add query annotation, which is has been the uh, I would say the number one ask from the open source community. Uh, multiple database is another very popular one. Spring Boot Actuator um, is you know something that uh, we are going to release uh, in the mid October um, re um, release cadence as part of our Azure Spring uh, Boot uh, release. Uh, the um, we introduced a new audit framework, so you can query the uh, last uh, created by and the last cre created date. You know, who was a uh, who, who was the last person who, who made that change? Um, there's now an, an add version uh, annotation that we introduced to um, support optimistic locking, which will in turn give you better performance. And finally, support for Java 11. So those are all very big, exciting news that we've uh, gem packed into the Cosmos DB V3 connector, and it is now generally available. Uh, I think this is the last slide that I want to share with you uh, before we delve into the live demo. I promise uh, I won't bore you with any more slides. So, uh, just a bit of a history. We started the uh, Spring Integrations project all the way back in 2017. Uh, we merged our repo into the Azure SDK pipeline, and that gave us uh, better uh, test coverage, uh, being able to leverage the, the same pipeline and test framework. Uh, as well as it, it, it improves uh, discoverability, right? So you can now come to this, this single uh, mono repo and find all Azure SDK uh, in the in, in GitHub, right? Uh, and then um, our release cadence has been uh, a monthly re release cadence. So in the month of uh, uh, October, we added a key uh, enhancements to Azure Storage and Key Vault. Uh, and between September and uh, the uh, the remainder of this year, we're going to be incrementally adding uh, more feature releases for Cosmos DB. Uh, a lot of the, the feature enhancements already talked about, there are, but there are more coming. Uh, and in addition, we will have uh, new scenarios added for AD and AD B2C. So that's our roadmap. And as I said, that's the last slide that I want to I want to share with you, uh, and then I'm going to now hand it over to Xiaolu, who is going to uh, do some live coding with you all. So Xiaolu, um, take it away, please. Yeah, thanks, Xiaolu. So I'm going to share my screen first. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay, uh, today we are going to build a web application called Candy Shop, uh, in which you can add candies to the shop or retrieve candy by ID. In this sample, we will use the 
Azure Cosmos DB as our backend database. And so we can leverage the ability of our library uh, shown just introduced, the Azure Spring Data Cosmos to do some CRUD operations again against the database. And then we will save our database connection string to, to another Azure service called Azure Key Vault. And we will retrieve it as an external property from that from that service. And as we usually do, we when we build a build a Spring Boot application, we always go to the start Spring IO. And here we go. We're going. We are going to create a create a demo project called Candy Shop. And as I just said. This is a web application, so we will add the Spring Web dependency, and we, we are going to add some Azure support. So, at this Azure support, we'll give you the ability to import uh, dependencies from our dependency bomb, and we are going to retrieve our connection string to from the Azure Key Vault. So again, we add the Azure Key Vault dependency. And now we are using Spring Boot and Java 8 and our dependencies. So I go, I'm going to generate the application. Okay, so here instead of saving the uh, the Cosmos DB key in the uh, application properties over here, uh, as I alluded earlier, we can do better than that. So Xiaolu is going to save the the keys in the in Azure Key Vault instead. Yeah. So we we open the project in the IntelliJ IDEA, and it's building. Okay. So this, as you can see, is just a blank project um, with uh, you know just minimal scaffolding generated from uh, Spring Initializer. Okay. So. So we got a blank application here, and since our uh, our application is called Candy Shop, uh, we're going to create a module uh, which named which named Candy. And I'm going to give it a give it some property like ID and. It will have a name. I also create a quantity property for it. So we add some get setter for it. And as I'm, I'm as I said before, we're going to store this pojo into our Cosmos database. So we need to add some extra dependency here. Called Azure Spring Data Cosmos. Yeah. So with the Azure Azure Spring Data Cosmos added to the class pass, we now we now change this uh, Candy Pojo into a into a into a container. A container, as John mentioned before, is just the just the table in Cosmos DB. So I'm going to name this uh, table as candies. And as uh, the Cosmos, Cosmos DB required, each, 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 each table must have a partition key. Uh, since, uh, since the Cosmos DB is a distributed uh, database, uh, the partition key will help uh, the entity uh, spread across different partitions. Sorry, so, uh, sorry, Shaolu, can you zoom in the uh, text, the, the presentation mount, your code? Uh, you need me to zoom in? Sean, can you see it clearly? Yeah, uh, yes, I can see it. Because uh, we are going to record it, so maybe the other not join, so can see clearer. Uh, or you can change the your screen resolution size. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, yes, better, better, better now. Okay, thank yeah, you. Better. Okay, no problem. So we got the pojo and we got the 
we got we got the container set up and we, we are going to next step to build a candy repository. Uh, if you guys just, just look small again, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you guys uh if you guys uh, write code write code in a traditional Spring MVC uh, framework. It will always have something like a repository to access the database. And with the power of our Spring Data Cosmos, you just need to extend the Cosmos repository interface. So you will have the ability to do some CRUD operations against it. Sorry, this should be interface. And to mark it as a repository. So the Spring Spring Data can pick it up. Repository. <clears throat> I can show you guys some interface here. It will have some ability to, uh, to find object and delete object and find all or save. So this is the candy repository. Uh, since we're uh, since this project is a is a web application, we're going to add a controller for it. I'm going to make this a REST controller, and it will have some request mapping called candies. And uh, since uh, since we want to save some candies to the database and 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 retrieve the candies, so I will just uh, add a post mapping here. And we will retrieve the candy project from the request body. And. We are going to access the repository, so we need to auto wire the candy repository we just created. So in the post part, post method, we can just uh, just call the save function. The save function, the save function is auto is out of box. So we get this. Post methods. And we need to we need to uh, retrieve the candies we just added. So I will just add a get mapping again, which will have the okay get by. So I'm going to retrieve the ID from the pass. And again, we can call the find by ID, find by ID method with uh, from the candy repository with the ID saved here. And oh, I need to return something. So I need to return this. Oh, let's see what's the return type. It's optional, so I need to wrap it up. Okay, now we got the controller, we got the repository. Uh, I think uh, one thing I want to highlight there, shall we, yeah. we can go back to the controller. Yeah. You, know, you notice that you don't, you didn't have to implement save or find by item. You just, you get out of that, uh, out of the box from the Spring Data Framework. It's almost like magic, right? That's, that's the beauty of, of Spring Boot and then, uh, you know, it's, and you get data. all that for free. Yeah, Spring Data, yes. Yeah. Right. And we on. got the repository set up. Uh, we need to add one more annotation to let the Spring Data inject the repository for us. So we just enable Cosmos repositories, <clears throat> and now we got uh, all the all, all, all of our Pojo and uh, controller and repository. And we need to add one more thing to configure con configure the connection string to the Cosmos. So I will create a class called uh, app config configuration, and this will be a configuration class. And 
the Spring Data Cosmos pr uh, provides a abstract uh, configuration class, and we, we just need to uh, uh, extend that and implement the method it provides. It requires you to provide a database name. So in our case, it will be Candy Shop. And in this, abs uh, in this abstract Osmos configuration, we need to we need to we need, we need to inject a bin called Cosmos Client Builder. So the the Cosmos uh, the Cosmos client will build from this client builder. So and this will have some properties like endpoint and key. So uh, where do we get these keys? We can we can add the value annotation and we can okay and with this one we call something like Azure Cosmos key and this one will be like Azure Cosmos URI. Right, so Spring is going to try to pick up those value from one of the um, uh, property source. Yeah, yeah, property source. That's the case. So as I just uh, said before, uh, we are going to use the key vault as our external uh, res uh, external property source. So we have to we have to add some properties uh, in the application properties to enable our key vault. So I will just paste uh, my properties here. I already set up uh, a keyword, Azure Keyword instance and uh, as well as a Azure Cosmos DB. So I will just uh, paste my properties here. This is the uh, Keyword URI, and this is uh, the tenant ID, which is also in Azure concept. Uh, the client ID and the client secret is like uh, your name and password to access the keyword. So let me check again. Okay, I think we can try to run the application now. Ooh, let's try it. Hope this works. It will take some time for the application to boot up. So this took like what? 10 minutes for you to to write this app from the very beginning right yeah yeah the, the application right. is started now and since uh, since we added some some rest endpoint here so we can try to call, call it use the curl can you guys see my screen yes how about how about the folks online I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, yes, can. yes uh, we can see it clearly. Oh, cool. So uh, I'm going to call a, so I'm going to call a get. So let me see. We call, we call get, uh, we call get uh, request to the web service and we can see here no, no result returns. So I'm going to try to put something add some candies to my database. So this will be like, oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to add some gummy bears to my database. So I'm going to call this post request mapping. Okay, let's try to get the candies with ID two. Yeah, as, right, as you can got see. Some gummy bears. Yeah, I got some gummy bears, but I think the first time I try to retrieve the with the, the candy with ID one, right? So let's do some modification here. And try to add some KitKat bars. 
instead, and I will set the quantity to 10. And again, let's uh, try to retrieve the candy with ID 1. Yeah, now we can get oh. the. So that, uh, that's, uh, that's, that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty much my step. That, that works. All right. Hooray! Worked in the first yeah. time. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So I, I think, Xiaolu, I got a couple questions. Number one, uh, is the sample you showed us that is uh, using the uh, the traditional query method. What would it take for me, for you to convert that into a um, um, web flux react. style? Web flux, yeah. 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 Uh, nowadays, uh, people, uh, most people prefer web flux instead of synchronized. Way so there there are pretty much three steps you uh, you need to modify here. Uh, the first is you need to change this uh, dependency to to the web flux in, instead of the web, and okay. and you can you can pick the web flux uh, the netty, and uh, for our for our repository part we 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 also support the reactive stack. Uh, and you, you guys can see here, uh, there is a Cosmos repository here, and we also have some class, some class with reactive stack, which is reactive Cosmos repository. So uh, the only thing you need to change uh, in this repository is you need to change it to extend the re uh, reactive Cosmos repository. And uh, an an another more thing you need to do is uh, you you need to you need to change this uh, annotation. This is also used for the synchronized repositories. And for the async part, we also have a enable reactive Cosmos repository annotation. And that three steps uh, is all what you, is all you need to do to change to the reactive stack. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. And then you would be able to use your, your, your Flux and Mono APIs to to query your Cosmos database. Yeah. Yeah. OK, that's cool. Um, another thing that I noticed is your uh, application properties file. Uh, you're not including the Cosmos database key here, which is good. But still, you're putting your, your key vaults client key here. Right? Yeah, so you're yeah. Not, you have not solved that problem completely. You just you, you mitigated one, uh, one step, but you, know, you still have the, the secret management to deal with in your code. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, in you know let's 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 make that better. I think let's uh, in the next segment or the next session we let's turn uh, that into uh, a fully managed uh, uh, secret um, uh, by leveraging the uh, managed identity from Azure Spring Cloud. Can we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, any questions from the audience on the live coding part? Hello, if you have any question, you can just unmute your speaker and yeah, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay, you can either ask a question now or we're going to have a Q&A session. I think after the two sessions, you can ask them as well. All right, uh, in that case, let me switch back to my presentation mode. Um, Uh, what is going on here? Uh, hey, desktop one. All right. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. Can you see my yes. screen? Yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, so to get started uh, with Spring on Azure, right here are some a couple of steps. Number one, you can try the uh, some of the uh, the samples that we have. Um, Oh, in this link, I'm, I have a link to the AAD B2C sample, but uh, you can find the, the same. Um, there is a sample for a Cosmos DB in the same repository. Um, uh, you can uh, read our documentation on, you know, on how to get started. And lastly, give us your feedback. Please give us your feedback. Your feedback is very important. Um, and, and lastly, you know, get a, if you want to get a copy of present, today's presentation, you can scan this barcode. And, and and request a copy. 
All right. Uh, and with that, uh, I think we're going to conclude this session and jump into Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, hey, Alex, how are we doing on time? Yeah, uh, you are you are still on time, actually. No worries. Still on time. Okay. All right. Still good. Still good. Still All good. Right. Still good. All right. Cool. Let me close this deck and switch to the Azure Spring Cloud deck. Switching my PowerPoint. Hey, while I'm doing that, Shalu, I think uh, maybe you want to change your screen resolution uh, while I'm doing my presentation so you don't have to keep switching the font size. OK, let me try that. All right. All right, Azure Screen Cloud. Assuming we have the same audience sticking around from, from the previous session, uh, I'm going to skip the slides that I've already covered. Way, could you activate the uh, you know, live caption? Ah, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Our subtitle. Yes. Okay. So in in the in the pre previous session, we talked about some of the microservices patterns and how does Spring uh, as a framework help you uh, to accelerate your development. Uh, um, so that's all great. You know, you've got Spring doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but there are still impediments, right? If you think about, you know, deploying your application uh, into the cloud environment, and namely, number one, there is still a high level of efforts to maintain your infrastructure in the cloud. Right? Uh, your application lifecycle management, and what, we, what I mean by that is the ability to, to create an app, start an app, restart an app, stop an app, keep your app environment patched up, Right, against new CVEs or new Java versions is a is a major undertaking. Um, and lastly, your ability to troubleshoot applications once they're deployed to the cloud is you know often easier said than done. So with that in mind, um, the team at Microsoft and uh, and VMware we uh, came together and, and worked on this. Um, um, a new service, Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, what it is, it's, it's a new a fully managed service for your uh, Spring Boot-based microservices. Um, and uh, the good news is this service is now uh, fully generally available in, I think we're in eight regions today, and we have plans to uh, expand to four additional regions by end of this year. Uh, and when we created this product, um, we, we sort of oriented our thinkings around the, the three pillars, uh, fully managed infrastructure, building lifecycle management, and ease of monitoring. Each one of these pillars, not surprisingly, mapped back to a uh, problem that we, I stated in the problem space. And this is how you know generally you you will find Microsoft uh, do the uh, do our product development is you know we start with customer pain points and then we try to find a, a solution that caters to that customer pain point you know as opposed to uh, you know, I think there used to be a time where you know we uh, we find a solution and then we try to look for a problem that fits into the problem the, the, or the, the problem that fits into the solution. Uh, Okay, um, so let's talk about infrastructure management first. Right? Um, if you were to build a Spring Boot app and you were to deploy that to a cloud environment, think of the, all the list of things you have to do. Uh, number one, you have to do your application development. You have to iterate it, you have to debug it. Right? So that's something you do today, and you will continue to do that on Azure Spring Cloud. No cloud provider can take that, with, that away from you because that's your core business logic. But other than that, if you you know if you take a look at the, the items on the rest of the list, uh, continuous deployment, uh, build and managing clusters online, uh, managing the Spring Cloud middleware. And what do we what I mean by Spring Cloud middleware is you know, think of your 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 Spring Cloud microservices patterns, Eureka, uh, distributed tracing, uh, Spring Cloud config, those sort of uh, uh, patterns, uh, monitoring and logging scaling, patching, support, all of that, you know, you have to do it yourself or depending on the level of support contract you have with, with, with VMware, you know, it's, you would either have to get community level support or you would have to contact VMware for it. Right? But um, if you were to use that as a Spring Cloud, you get all of that in a fully managed fashion. Right? That's, that's the, the key difference here. Right? Now, uh, if you, um, 
orient your view towards the diagram that we have in the middle of this slide. Uh, this is a logical uh, overview of uh, what Azure Spring Cloud look like. So in the middle of this diagram, we have two large shaded boxes. Uh, the, the first one, the first box on the left, this is what we call a user environment. This is where, you know, you would deploy your app, up, app one, app two, app, up to app n. The service runtime is where we keep the, the Spring Cloud middleware. So, I've, you know, we've already talked about uh, Spring Cloud config server, uh, uh, service registry, uh, we have a module for lifecycle management, we have a module that keeps uh, track of your, uh, your, your application health and make sure that your, your apps is resilient. We have a module for log streaming, data encryption, custom domain, and self-diagnostics. Now, on top of the Azure Spring Cloud boundary, you know we have uh, Azure Spring Cloud is fully integrated with Azure Monitor. Right? So you get logs out of the box. You get uh, uh, metrics, distributed tracing, all from Azure Monitor. Uh, and then for identity management, uh, because we're integrated with, uh, you know, at, uh, our first party identity provider, Azure Active Directory, you know, you get, you know, uh, you get the full suite of, or full power of AAD behind it. Um, and then uh, lastly, you know, you, uh, you know, you have, we have this thing called service binding, which is a convenient way for you to, to bind your, your apps to a backend uh, database and have us manage the connection string. As of today, we support three types of uh, data services, uh, Azure Database for MySQL, Azure Cosmos DB, and Azure uh, Cache for Redis. To deploy your code, uh, Azure Spring Cloud is integrated with some of the most popular CI-CD pipelines, so uh, Azure DevOps, uh, GitHub, and Jenkins. And lastly, uh, Azure Spring Cloud uh, sits on top of uh, Azure Kubernetes service, which is depicted on the bottom of this diagram. Uh, next up is uh, our um, support for application lifecycle management. Right? So um, over here you have uh, two choices when it comes to deploying your app. You can either build the app yourself in a jar file and then uh, deploy the jar file directly, or you can give us your source code. Uh, and then what happens is we will use the VMware Tunsil build service, which behind the scenes, um, uh, leverages the your um, the, the the cloud native build packs to uh, to detect what kind of source code you have and then uh, build your source code into a executable jar file. We will then containerize it um, and then deploy it onto Azure Kubernetes uh, cluster. And then uh, once they're deployed, uh, your app is then automatically wired up to the Spring Azure Spring Cloud runtime. And once that's all done, you know you can connect to Azure. Uh, your, your data services uh, to the right of this diagram. And lastly, uh, monitoring, right? Um, so gain insights with Azure Monitor. What I'm showing here is a, uh, a screenshot of what uh, the application map looks like from Azure Monitor. So you have, a, uh, in this case, I have a gateway service, and the diagram shows me that the gateway service is connected to an account service and an auth service, uh, and it tells me the number of calls as well as latencies that is going on between those three services. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, you also get uh, alerts. You get uh, you get uh, log stream in real time, and then uh, you also get aggregated logs for system as well as JVM metrics. Uh, hopefully, we'll have time, and then we'll take a look at uh, you know a lot of these areas uh, in a live demo. Okay. And that's it. Demo times. It is demo time again, Xiaolu. Are you ready? Yeah, I think I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Uh, I will kill my screen share and you can share yours. Yeah. So uh, with the with the demo project project we just built, uh, built before a moment ago, mm -hmm. now we are going to deploy our demo project to the Azure Spring Cloud service. Let's and do it. We, I think we're I think we're ready for production. Let's deploy this thing to Azure Spring Cloud. Yeah, and, and the first thing, first of, uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to build the package. We need to run Maven clean package, and to generate the deployable jar. Yeah, pretty Actually, fast. Actually, uh, shall we, you know what? I, um, before you do that, I, I really don't like the uh, the fact that we're storing secrets in application properties. 
Can we remove yeah. that? Yeah, I, that I, I, I think I just removed it. But oh, I, you already did it? Okay. Yeah, but, I, but we can see, uh, I, I can show you again. I just commented it out. Okay, all right, that's gone. All right. And since we are going to use another way to access the keyboard, so okay. we are going to try to manage the identity. Cool. So all we're storing in the application properties file is we're just telling our Spring app the location of our key vault. Yeah. And then we'll we'll let manage identity do the all the secret management behind the scenes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so cool. we already have uh, we already created a Spring Cloud service named as the candy shops. So now we are going to create a Spring Cloud app. Uh, named the Shanghai Candy Shop. So, and and as well, we are going to assign a managed identity to the application. So, I'm going to run this command. It will take a while. Okay. Yeah. Um, so over here, what it's doing, it is um, <laughs> there are four steps involved here, and you can read uh, the label on the screen. But essentially, behind the scenes, it's it's creating an app in the Azure Spring Cloud uh, cluster, and specifically, it is uh, allocating resources on the uh, uh, Azure Kubernetes clusters, and, and you know that's what's you know taking the, the majority of time because you're you're actually allocating a VM resource behind the scenes, uh, and then once that's all done, this deployment command actually deploys like a Hello World app, so you don't get an empty uh, 503. Uh, or a 404 screen uh, when you when you launch it. But I think yeah, this is done. Yeah, it's not that yeah, bad. Think, uh, yeah, that's done. It's deployed. Uh, and since we, uh, we just assign an entity, uh, assign a managed uh, identity to the app application, so I'm going to store the managed identity first. I'm going to export the service identity to a local variable. So I'm oh, so how did we get this uh, service identity in the first place? <laughs> Hey, Shalu, your voice is fading out. I, I oh, can't. Sorry. There we go. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, so mean how... I, just, I just ran a Azure CRI command so I can get the. Was it the previous <laughs> command that you ran? Yeah, this one. Just this one. Oh, see well, it? that. that uh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to echo it. I got the, the identity. Okay. So we are going to deploy our jar file to the application oh no, Spring Cloud app. So now we have a managed identity that is associated with the app that we just created. Yeah, I'm going to deploy the application. <coughs> okay, this is going to take a while again. Oh, this is the, the actual uh, deployment, right? Yeah, this is the okay. deployment. Okay. Yeah, this one, I think it's going to take a couple minutes. So why don't we do this? While we, this is uh, deploying, why don't uh, I switch to my screen and I can walk um, the audience through the, you know, give you guys a few of what the Azure, uh, Azure Spring Cloud portal experience look like. So let me take over of the screen share. One more time. Yeah. There we go screen one. Okay, you should be able to, to see my screen. Um, okay, so what I'm showing you here, this is another demo project. It's called Learn TV Head Clinic. Okay. Head Clinic is uh, the kind of a popular uh, open source um, Spring Boot app. So, and we've deployed that on the cloud. Um, under, the, under the setting menu, we have an item called app, Apps. This is where we list all the Spring, uh, Spring Boot apps under the, the service. Uh, so in this case, the, the Spring Cloud service is called Learn TV Pet Clinic. And we have one, two, three, four, five, five uh, microservices under this service instance. 
uh, if I click on uh, the uh, the app, so let's say if I click on the the gateway app, for instance, right, then this is where I would be able to, to stop, restart, refresh my app. Um, you get um, you know, you, and it, under the uh, application instance name, this tells you the discoverable status, who is Eureka. Uh, you have the ability to ability to scale up to more than one uh, vCPU, which is the default. And then, yeah, here this is some this is something that that's very interesting. Oh, I forgot to zoom in a bit, so you guys can have a easier time. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So let's say if let, let me click on the gateway service one more time. Right. So over here, uh, this is the, the scaling out menu. You have two options. You can either manually scale out, so by dragging this this dial here, right, you can scale it all the way to well 500 instances. That's crazy. Uh, but what you probably want to do in a uh, in, in a production environment, if you assuming you have a non cyclical workload, is the ability to auto scale. So this is a new feature that we are uh, uh, public previewing in this stage. And what that allows you to do is uh, to define a set of auto scale rules. So for instance, you can add a rule and say that, uh, you know, I want to auto scale my Spring Cloud instance based on uh, uh, let's say, let me pick an interesting metric here. Uh, uh, let's say system CPU usage, right? If I say um, I'm going to scale my instance up by one uh, as long as the moment that uh, my CPU utilization exceeds 70%. Right? So you can do that. And once you when, and that, all you gotta do is, you know, you click on this add here, and then now you have a auto scaling rule uh, that's that's now tagged to um, to the to this uh, app instance, which is pretty cool. Right? Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can uh, auto scale. You can say that uh, it, you can it, this can be a schedule based. Right? So you can say at this time, you know, I want to scale out my instance by one. So that's another option you have. Let me uh, discard my changes and go back. Okay. Let's see what uh, what are some of the other interesting things that I want to show you. Uh, I'm not going to go you know, have the, the luxury of time to, to show everything on this, so I'm going to pick the, uh, the the most interesting ones, or in my view, the most interesting ones. So metrics, right? This is this could be a good one. So this is where you can see. Um, uh, pick a metrics. So again, let's see if I'm pick, pick CPU utilization. Actually, no, let me pick something else. I've already looked at CPU. Um, what about my HTTP? Uh, what, what was it called? What, um, forgot what was it called. Um, was it a request? Uh, yeah, it's on the request. Uh, let's see, yeah, uh, average request time. That, that could be a good one, right? So this, this shows me the average uh, request time that it takes um, to hit my service. And you can, you know, you have the, the ability to, to pick a, a chunk and zoom in. And all of that is the power of uh, Azure Monitor. Um, let's see what else do I want to show. Oh, this is a this is a very interesting one. So. A distributor tracing uh, application maps. Right? So let's see what we've got here for the pet clinic. Okay, whoa, looks like we've got a lot of stuff going on here. Okay, so you have a admin service, right? And this service is connected to a whole bunch of backend services, right? And so you get the idea. Like I said, this is just a very quick and convenient way for you to uh, to, to reason about the, um, the the connections between your different apps, uh, and uh, you know you can delve into the uh, some of the detailed metrics on the number of calls as well as uh, the average latencies that are taking place between your apps. So that's that. Um, that's. The, um, 
what else do I want to show you? Um, how about um, alerts? Alerts could be a good one. So you can you can set a new alert rule. Uh, you know, you can send yourself an email. Let's say if you're again based on conditions you set. If your CPU utilization goes beyond certain threshold, you can send yourself an alert. Again, that comes from uh, Azure Monitor. Or uh, what about diagnostics? Let's see uh, apps deployments. What happened to my? Ah, there we go. Okay, diagnose and solve problems. So this could be interesting, right? Let's say if I'm experiencing some availability and performance issues. So I, let me I'll click on that scorecard, and then um, let's say my app is slow. Let me click on that card. And what this does is going to suggest a, a, you know, a whole bunch of metrics, right? So it, you know, it's, it's saying, you know, maybe your, your CPU usage is, you know, is, is um, not good. Well, in this case, my CPU usage is good, it's green. But my HTTP response duration is too hot because there's a red exclamation mark next to it. So I can click on that and it, it'll tell you, it'll give me an analysis of what my HTTP response duration look like and it's suggesting that my uh, duration was high duration was detected okay. all right uh i think you know without you know spending too much time on the on the azure portal shall we, uh, i'm assuming the deployment is already complete yeah the uh the deployment is completed and and failed as well uh, okay all right it failed oh let's 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 take a look on why it failed then uh, so without uh, further ado, let me switch back to you then, Chalu. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna stop sharing. Let's see why did it, why did it fail? Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah. Just as you you do some presentation, I run this uh, Spring Cloud App Logs command to retrieve the logs to see what what went wrong with our first deployment, and I find this reason. <clears throat> It says uh, the user or group don't have access to the key vault. Uh, it means uh, uh, we use the we use the managed identity to access our key vault, but I but we forgot to uh, assign assign the permission for for our identity. So now this is what I'm going to do. I see. I see. So yeah, mm -hmm. in other words, we we have the uh, we 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 have a key we created. Uh, yeah. By a managed identity, but that key is is not uh, uh, being accepted by uh, from Azure Key Vault, and we need to to tell Azure Key Vault that this is a valid key, which uh, that's yeah. a step we, we didn't do. Okay, which that's yeah. that's uh, that's, so, uh, um, that's fine. I think the other thing that is uh, worth worth mentioning here, though, uh, is the the um, you know ability to troubleshoot. Um, issues once that's deployed to the cloud, right? So over here, you've shown us that this feature, I believe it's called a log stream, right? So you yeah. run this command and then it looks like there's a after dash sync. So I'm assuming this means uh, since the last 10 minutes and you are filtering based on the last 70 lines. I'm assuming yeah. that's what it means, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you get logs uh, from, from apps that's uh, deployed onto Azure Spring Cloud. Yeah. So now I'm going to add the access policy for our managed identity. And okay. this variable shows uh, is, it is exactly the service identity I just I just created for the application. Okay. So I do that. Let's do that. Let's add that entity into keyboard. And this uh, command uh, returned with success with success. So uh, since our de first deployment is failed, so I'm going to restart the, uh, our application. Mm -hmm. So here's another thing you can do with our Azure CRI. You could uh, restart an app application. So I'm just run this. And uh, while, while this uh, application is running, I'm going to visit the, our application through the Azure Azure portal. So this is the Azure, uh, Azure Spring Cloud service we just created. And here you can see our Shanghai candy shop application. And this this is the application's URI. 
So let's see. Is the is still restarting? Yeah, it takes. I think it takes a bit of time to restart, and it's uh, behind the scenes. It's um, restarting the app, obviously, and it, it's you know refreshing the application context. It is going to try to connect to the discovery service. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, 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 if applicable, right? It's going to try to connect to uh, or retrieve values from your Spring property sources. In this case, it's it's Key Vault. <laughs> Uh, using the managed yeah. identity we just provided. So it's doing a bunch of things behind the scenes. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we just uh, we just started. So I'm going to retrieve Is it the, started now? Is yeah. It, okay, it started. Okay. Yeah, uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. I'm going can, to retrieve the... Can you blow the, it up uh, a little bit? The yeah. font size? Can we make it a little bit? Okay. Oh, so now, so, it's, a, it, now it's a success. Now you've... Uh, the, App deployment has succeeded. Yeah, with the, the app keyboard information. Yeah. So uh, when I retrieve the candy with the ID one, I got I got my kick 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 mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think we got we got the application connected to the key vault successfully through the managed identity. Okay. Well. Nice. Yes. Congratulations one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, so Sean, uh, are you going to share more things about our think, service? Yeah, I think I think we covered a lot. Let's let me do a quick recap. Right. So we started by doing um, we created a Spring Boot app. Right. We uh, we uh, you know, uh, we leveraged Spring data uh, abstraction to interact with um, Azure Cosmos DB. And then we ran that app locally. We inserted some records, and then we retrieved the, the results. And that all looked good uh, on, on our local environment. Uh, but then the problem with that is, uh, even though we're not uh, storing secrets, uh, or in this, case, in this case, the Cosmos DB secret in the application properties, we were still storing our access key uh, for Key Vault in, your app, in my application properties. So then we said, you know, let's improve that. Let's and then also let's take this to production and deploy it to the cloud. Uh, and once we're in the Azure Spring Cloud environment, we're leveraging the managed identity concept to have Azure you know, uh, to manage our secret identity for us. Uh, so we created a, a new managed identity from from Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, we we then redeployed the app, which then failed because uh, even though we have a new identity now. Key Vault does not immediately uh, or automatically accept the new identity because we didn't tell it to. So then what Xiaolu did is using the, um, uh, the log stream feature to identify what that issue is uh, and then uh, inserted the or uh, granted access control of the uh, new uh, Key Vault. The, the, sorry, the new identity. We added the identity information inside Azure Key Vault, and then we restarted the app, and then looks like everything is now running in the cloud. So that's, I think that's a that's a recap. Did I miss anything, Shalu? I think uh, I think that's what we just do, and so. Cool. All right. So I think that's that concludes the demo part. Um, I think let me go switch back to presentation mode. I just have a few more slides, two more slides to be precise. Um, so let me do that. Uh, let me share my screen again. Screen share. Uh -huh. Stop one. And then go full screen on the sky. Okay. So roadmap, yeah. Azure Spring Cloud as a fully managed service, we first public previewed back in Q4 2019, uh, and uh, we GA'd not too long ago. At, at uh, you know, it's probably just a month ago at Spring One, right? Is when we GA'd so Q3 2020. And uh, since then, we've been working on, you know, a few uh, adding uh, or adding more capabilities in tooling, uh, PowerShell support, VS Code extension, as well as uh, Terraform. 
uh, oh, I missed v, uh, VNet and auto scaling. Those two are very, very important features that we added uh, right before uh, the um, GA announcement. Okay. And then going forward, we're going to be, you know, here's what we have on our roadmap. We have uh, um, third party APM integration, bring your own Docker image support, um, and uh, encryption with your own key. Uh, so that's what we've got going on. Uh, you know, if this, if if there are, you know, something that's on your mind, you believe we should cover in our roadmap. You know, you can either reach out to me directly, uh, or put that in the in, in the chat, and we'd be happy to take your feedback. As I stated before, we are currently in eight regions, and we have plans to expand to. Sorry, Jin, uh, could you please uh, show the subtitle again? Sorry. Ah, yes. Sorry, I yeah. gotta get into a habit of this thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not used to, yes. <laughs> to do that. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we you. are in uh, eight regions today. Right, so here's the cut line. Here's where we are today, right? Uh, and we are expanding to four more regions uh, by the end of this year. Uh, we already covered this slide in the last presentation, and really, this is the this is the last slide I have for you guys. Uh, it's our, our call to action slide. Uh, to get started on Azure Spring Cloud, you can try or one of these two links. Right? And uh, the first one is, is the getting started guide. Um, you can, um, uh, the second one is uh, the uh, Azure Spring Starter. So that, that was already covered in the, the previous session. So uh, forget about that one. Um, uh, the we have a bunch of online materials for you to learn, uh, and those are available in both in the form of uh, self-paced workshop on MS Learn, as well as uh, on our uh, GitHub repo. So you can visit either one of those links. The MS Learn module are uh, are shorter and then easier to follow. The ones on GitHub that's more uh, complete and has more stuff. Right. And again, you know, we we want your feedback. Please give us your feedback, because um, yeah, that's how we um, prioritize uh, our backlog is by listening to uh, your needs uh, and prioritize for your requirements. Okay. Um, and again, to get a copy of today's presentation, you can start. You can scan for this barcode uh, and you know fill out the information there, and uh, uh, our event team will send you a copy of both presentations. Thank you. All right, I guess back to you, um, Alex. Yes, sure. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Xiaolu uh, Dai and Shen Li for the session. Very amazing session. And, uh, you know, we, we really covered a lot of things about the Spring Boot app and the integration to Cosmos CB. And also we really do demo also uh, to the Azure Cosmos CB. Uh, Sorry, Ma Kang Hendy, do you want to say something? I thought no, you're no, 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 okay. No, no. <laughs> I just I you're raising it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no worries. Okay, um, so basically, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I will just share the you know uh, some uh, last slide also to uh, doing some uh, reminder uh, for you all. Uh, Wait. So yeah, just okay. Wait a second. Okay, just would like to remind again uh, the Azure fundamental training. I already give the uh, all of the link as well in the chat box. So yeah, uh, you can leverage uh, this training as well. Uh, it's uh, to take the Azure uh, get get certified uh, with our Azure fundamentals. So yeah. It's very uh, uh, important, and we rather really cover a lot of things uh, today. And please uh, subscribe in our uh, community uh, Microsoft Source newsletter to get a lot of updates, a uh, lot of uh, new things, like uh, latest updates in the current uh, 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 things that happen in the uh, developer uh, in Microsoft. So yeah. Uh, please uh, subscribe this and uh, of course uh, get uh, again get to the session materials. Uh, I'm also ready put this on the chat box. Uh, you can uh, also uh, scan this barcode to uh, gain the uh, uh, presentation material from the uh, two hour uh, session from 
uh, Xiao Lu and uh, Shen. Okay, and thank you so much for uh, attending this uh, webinar and uh, for uh, Paweli as well, and also for sure for uh, a very big hand applause for Xiao Lu Dai and also for Shen Li because you know it's ready in what time is it what right time? now? Uh, Simply. It's, it's uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Wow, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Thank you so much for doing this for with us. <laughs> happy to happy to be here and <laughs> participate. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Yes, hope of you all um, enjoy the, this session and uh, hopes this session is uh, uh, uh will be very uh, useful for uh, all of you and if you have uh, any question uh please uh, chat also to my email uh, so i will uh, pass it also to the uh Shinli, uh and the uh, shallow die so i will recap all of the question as well if you would like to ask in bahasa also it's okay okay i think that's it from me uh Kang Hendy, uh if uh, sorry if you have still any question we can we also have uh, still open for uh, uh any question that uh, you had actually uh silakan juga bertanya dalam bahasa Indonesia uh silakan kalau ada pertanyaan kalau uh, ya, silakan kalau ada pertanyaan silakan dan hmm. azur spring cloud ini silakan jangan malu-malu this is a good time to ask to write to Microsoft developer that integrate with Azure and Spring Cloud. Uh, hello, I want to ask a question to Sean. Uh, okay. I want to yes. know how. Sorry, Willy... sorry, who is who is speaking Willy. now? Yeah, well, uh, my name is. Oh, Willy. okay. Yeah, <laughs> ah. yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, I want to ask a question about Sean. Is how big is the division of Java developer in uh, Shanghai? And what uh, kind of a developer you have, and they're working on which uh, part of the Azure and everything? Because I see the uh, Shalu Day and uh, very active in the GitHub for the Azure Java SDK or something. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the reason why Shalu is uh, very active is because she's uh, one of the engineering team leads. Uh, and uh, it was her responsibility or her sole responsibility to to handle GitHub issues. Now that we our team has expanded, uh, we've, uh, she is now able to offload a lot of her responsibilities to other people. But to answer your question, how many people we have? Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this, uh, in, or in my introduction, we have two teams that represent Spring on Azure. Uh, we have about uh, you know over a dozen people. Spring uh, integrations team, and then on the Azure Spring Cloud side, we have a much larger group. Uh, probably, I would say it's uh, over a few dozen people for the Azure Spring Cloud, and that's that's only Spring on Azure. Now. The, if we go up even one level, Java on Azure is a that's yeah. a much larger group, right? So that's oh, Java yeah. in doing Spring. So if you count all that, I don't know how many people see Java. Azure, to be honest, but it's, it's a large group. I think the you know I, I I think key takeaway is you know we Microsoft is very serious about our Java investments uh, in Azure, and uh, we'll be expanding uh, quite a lot. Like I think if you look at comparing us between today and a year ago, this team in Shanghai, which focused strictly on Spring, we've almost doubled in size. That's wow. how serious we are oh. about Spring. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so because uh, I see from the uh, the website is the the Java champion and a lot of people like uh, Martins uh, and uh, Bruno Borges and everyone is uh, joining the Java community because they're they are very active in Open GDK. Yeah. Right? So yeah, yeah. they're very they're part. So Bruno and Martins yeah. are part of the wider Java on Azure yeah. Yeah. team that I that I spoke. We all report up to the same org. So he and I we we work we have some collaboration. Oh, yeah, right. nice. Yeah, very, very great to see uh, the Java movement in uh, Microsoft. Thank you. Absolutely. Actually, if I can ask a question to you guys as well, 
if, if if you guys can again raise your hand if you have heard of Azure Spring Cloud before today's session. I have to gauge you know, how how big of a GTM motion we're doing. Maybe it's not a lot, but you know, just raise your hand if you have, if you have heard of Azure Spring Cloud before. Raise your hand, man. <laughs> Everyone. Oh. Two, two people. Welly and uh, Kang Handy. Uh, Hardly we have 27 people. In the <laughs> yeah. So, you know, this tells me that, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, you, we, we have a lot to do to advertise and raise the awareness of our products. Uh, Especially for community, yeah, because community, yeah. So, this is exactly why I'm here. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah, because uh, basically the Spring Boot. Uh, community in Indonesia is quite large, so because it's uh, using oh. banking, enterprise, and everyone is using Java, and startup is using Golang. But the the banking system or the enterprise, enterprise. The digital, yeah, they they all using Java, yeah. and they are yeah, investing a lot in Java uh, environment. So basically, yeah. this is a, a really good, great thing for us. Yeah, yeah, Full, fully aware of that, and that's why the Spring team is actually situated in Shanghai as opposed to. Uh, in Redmond, uh, yeah. United States, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so basically in the Redmond, it's all about the Java celebrity, but the real thing is doing in Shanghai. <laughs> well, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't put it that way. It's just, you know, uh, it's, uh, they're, they're doing a significant amount of work. A lot of the Java E work uh, yeah, is yeah. taking a yeah, yeah. Right. So Paweli, if we shared yeah. some content regarding the, you know, uh, Azure Spring Cloud and Astra, uh, what uh, what channel do you prefer? I mean, is it uh, using EDM or using Flyer or social media? Which one oh. that you prefer most? I, I think you can join the uh, the Telegram group. group. Yeah. If you have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Pops, you can uh, join my group. Yeah. Okay. Group. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. there are yes. many. Any sure. there. Yeah, yeah. We we also are very uh, very love to uh, see and a lot of more interesting stuff around the Microsoft side of Java. Yeah. At least uh, we um, yeah we, this is community, but at least if you have if you join on yeah let's say DevOps, so we have support and if anything, I think the the other company also uh, using the uh, DevOps Azure DevOps also and then. If you join and then we can ask directly, yeah, some kind of like that. Oh, we have issue like this, blah 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 blah. And then this catch up is will be faster than before. <laughs> for yeah, for easy lah, for easy yeah. I think it's good. Cause uh, we have uh, the others, yeah, your rifle, your rifle, and then the others uh, cloud provider also join. So if if they have some issue regarding deployment, they will directly uh, chat on the group, and then they will get support by saying, "Oh, you, you miss you miss configure in, in, on this. Please fix blah 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 blah." And then, okay, okay. so it will very welcome some kind like that. As Alex, okay, okay. Do you have any more question, uh, everyone? Please, if you don't hesitate, don't be shy. So please. You have uh, more questions about uh, Azure and Spring Cloud integration? Oh, please, this is good time to ask. Yes. You can ask anything very basic because there's no basic question. I think in this session is very yes. open and very free for everyone. So while waiting, while waiting for the other question. I think you can fill out the feedback. I already sent the feedback links uh, on the chat room about this event. If you meet up uh, 70, uh, 38, you can fill up in the above on that link. So uh, I will highly appreciate about that. So we can get better, better, better in next meetup in GVM, next, next GVM meetup. So. Yes. Please. Uh, we only have three response, so please, we're getting, we need more. 
So what's good, uh, your plan on integrating with J, uh, JVM and Microsoft Azure DevOps? What's the, uh, may I know, may I know the current, let's say, roadmap on Azure DevOps, especially on JVM Spring Boot, uh, Shang or Shaolo? Uh, the question is, what is our roadmap for integrating uh, Azure DevOps with, uh, is, is, are you? Yeah, yeah. Azure yeah. DevOps with Spring Cloud or uh, something else? Yeah, and Spring Cloud. Spring, Spring Cloud. Spring Cloud. Cloud. Yeah, yes. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. So that's already done. You know, we, we've already got Azure DevOps uh, connected uh, with Azure Spring Cloud. Uh, there, we have a quick start on it. You guys can check it out. Uh, you yeah. can direct. You can directly deploy an app uh, that is uh, um, built from Azure DevOps and deploy that onto Azure Spring Cloud. I'll, I'm gonna find the link and put it in the, the chat window. Okay. 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 Uh, on the Spring Boot side, um, let's see. Uh, that's yeah. That's also supported. You can build Spring Boot apps from Azure DevOps. That's supported today. Yes. I think on GVM community, I think we need some kind of separate session to, uh, let's say, uh, GVM and Azure workshop something to, let's say, to be community more uh, known, better known about this. I think most of us already try or already try this Azure DevOps. And then we try to deploy our Spring Boot apps into Azure DevOps, but I think yeah, maybe some of us stuck on some on something in which step, and then yeah, I didn't I didn't get any support, and then yeah, and then try to pulling blah 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 and blah blah blah, but still doesn't uh, solve his issue. I think we need more discussion about this. I think in separate uh, discussion about this. Okay. Uh, we will try. We, we will wait uh, on a, on the next event. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like Wally. <really? laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> we would love. Yeah. That. So that's that's an area of interest. You guys can request another talk uh, from yes. Microsoft Azure DevOps team to give you guys a more in depth tutorial. Um, you know, here's how you would do it. Kind of like what we did. We can do a live demo on how you would build yes. a Spring Boot app on Azure DevOps. So we certainly re request that. Okay. So, you know, maybe just curiosity, Shen. So, um, we, we all know the, uh, you know, China is very, very uh, advanced in the technology uh, uh, currently in, in, I think, in most aspects. And you know what? What is the current uh, things that in in the community in there that that uh, is is still we can say still is viral in there to to be uh, uh, that already being developed by uh, the community in there. So yeah, what what's the, the 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 current update that they create many maybe any apps or any uh, uh, something that developers already create in there that that really hot uh, topic right now. Um, that's uh, that's a good question. I don't I don't know if I'm, I have a good answer for that. Uh, I know that um, Spring is very hot in China. There are a lot Ooh. of Spring developers. Oh. Oh. Not that not that many Java E developers in, in, in China apparently. But Spring is is very hot, so I know that uh, Cloud Native. That's you know that's another pattern that is not a that is not only hot in China, but it's uh, a global. Uh, a global phenomenon, right? Everybody is going cloud native. Uh, almost the buzzwords these days. Um, so I think those are the two big patterns, yeah, that I that I see. Um, mm, okay. Yeah, sorry, I'm not able to <laughs> delve, <laughs> to delve, go into too much depth. This is, uh, this, I, I actually haven't had that many experience with uh, with the community. I. I, you know, oh, my focus okay. is more around enterprise customers and mm -hmm. oh, I see, yeah. I see, I see, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Wow, wow. amazing. 
thank you thank you okay guys uh, we, okay. we need still more uh, respond feedback feedback please fill the feedback form first the link before you leave uh, if you have any more question please uh, raise your hand and then don't forget to give us feedback because the, your feedback is, means a lot for us okay we'll have more i will send it to your email also uh, to get more to get more feedback yes okay we have more question everyone if no, uh, I think no more question, uh, Alex. Yeah. So I think we can uh, pause the session. But before we close the session, could you please uh, turn out your video and then take our take the photo first? And okay. Then, sure. Uh, please, please uh, turn on your yes. video and then take photo. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, let me do that as well. The problem here that I have is the office is <laughs> dark. <laughs> uh, let me do this here. Uh, we have to get remote camera, everyone. live flash, flash, live. Yeah. <laughs> everyone, uh, good. It's it's like nice. nine o'clock over here. They've shut down oh, all lights. So all light, yeah, yeah. Same same like uh, yeah. <laughs> nine o'clock. Here wow. we go. Okay, get remote. <laughs> this is, uh, Anybody who want to join? Please turn on your camera. Yes, please turn on your camera. Let's see. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Wait, wait. Desktop. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not like wait. Yes, Not just intermezzo. Uh, is there any ghost in China office? Or is there any ghost? In... Usually in Indonesia it's happened, you know? I yeah. hope so. <laughs> Usually in Indonesia. Otherwise we can have two go ghost buster. Ah, really? Actually, it's, it's really happened like in, in the Indonesia, you know, Microsoft Indonesia office, like the chair moving, in the, you know, like, yeah. Very spooky yes, uh, and creepy. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Is that IoT things? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, ready, everyone? Ready? Okay, are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. One, I okay. One, two, three. Smile, hold, hold your smile. One, two, three. Wait. Okay. Okay. I put on the chat windows first. Sorry, so you can see uh, how it looks like. Wait a second. Okay, already. It's it takes a moment. Here. Yeah, we still have some people as well. Okay, one more. Um, oh, you want to do one more? All right, turn my back. Okay. Yeah, yeah, flashlight yeah. back one more time. Oh, this light is not looking good for me, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Hold. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Microsoft team. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Shaolu. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, everyone, for having given yes. me up. Uh, Thank you for having us. It's, yeah. uh, it's my yeah. our pleasure to be We're here. We're going to have next meetup on the next GVM meetup, right? Okay. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, okay. Okay. Cool. All right. You guys see are you awesome. See you on next oh, event, yeah? See you on next oh, event. Dude, hopefully, we'll get the opportunity to talk to see you all in the next event. Okay. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Bye. Good night all. Good night. Sleep well. Sleep well. <laughs> I work balance. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you for Okay. Uh, okay.